Here's what you need to know to start sending automated emails with sequences and visual automations in Kit. Here we are inside of the visual automations page. I got here by going to automate and visual automations. We'll come back to this page in just a little bit, but I wanted to highlight this really quick because we're about to talk about sequences and this is our first step into really automating with Kit. You wanna grow your business sustainably and you have a ton of things going on. As we get into automation with Kit, this is where there's really powerful features that can help you be a little more hands-off while you're still connecting with your audience and maybe even connecting them in a better way than you could if you were just looking at your account all day. You can send emails to your subscribers as soon as they subscribe, regardless of their time zone. And it's an amazing way to just continue to keep your list active. So again, we'll come back to visual automations in a minute, but I wanna keep that in mind as we go into sequences. So let's go to send and then sequences. Again, these sequences are emails that send out over time. And one great use case for these, there's a lot of them, including selling products, etc. But a welcome email is one of the best ways to use a sequence. So let's go into my welcome sequence here. This particular sequence is only two emails. You could make these as long as you want to. I just want to show how these are set up inside of a sequence. So you can see on the right side, we have emails and we have two emails set up here. The first one goes out immediately when somebody subscribes. And the second one is 21 days later. Now these sequences don't work on their own. That's what we'll get into visual automations for, and that helps connect to them. But this is the timing of when somebody is added to the sequence. When do these emails go out? So for immediately on the left side here, you can see that I have sent this email immediately. For that, I've just put it as zero days. But you could put this as as many days as you'd like to. You can also see on the second email that I've chosen to send it 21 days after the previous email, and I've chosen not to send it on a Sunday. For me personally, Sunday is when my emails go out, so I don't want this to go out at the same time my regular weekly emails go out. I want it to go out some other time during the week. The editor for these emails is what you would expect from our time looking at broadcasts. If you wanna see a more in-depth view of this editor, I would recommend watching the broadcast section of this demo. But this particular editor is set up exactly like you would expect. It uses the same templates and the same familiar UI that you're used to. You're just now putting them into an automated sequence of emails rather than those one-time send it now style broadcasts. One handy thing about these sequences is that that each email could have its own template. You can see at the top here, there's a template. And you can select here from all the templates you have in your library and choose one for each email, which is really, really handy. You can also change the order even after these emails are live. So if I wanted this one to be the first, I could simply drag it to the top. And now that's the first email and I'm prompted to save that order. For this example, I won't be saving this order, but the point is you can do it. So let's take a quick look at settings. If I go to the top right here and I click on settings, we can see all of the settings for this particular sequence, including who emails are being sent as. You can also change the template for each new email you create in this sequence so that each one you create is the one you intend for this sequence. You can also change the sequence schedule. So by default, I have all days on for this. But if you know every email in this sequence should only send on a certain day, you can uncheck all of the days except for the day you want it to be sent. An example of someone using this particular feature would be if you wanted to have an evergreen series of emails. So in other words, you only want emails to go out on Thursday. So every Thursday, a new email is sent from this sequence and it just continues to work on its own. You can also choose around what time these are sent. So when it's a day delay or multiple day delay, what time would you want it to send and what time zone would you want that to be sent in? You can also exclude subscribers from the sequence. So down here, you can choose certain tags that they might be excluded or certain forms, sequences, etc. This is really handy if you have a certain tag, for example, that you want to make sure if somebody has this, I don't want them to go through this sequence, you can exclude them right there. And finally, over here on the right side, you can see we have an option to either make this sequence active or inactive. Activating this sequence will allow its published emails to be sent to all of the subscribers in the sequence currently going through it. 
uh, when the sequence is not active though, no emails are sent and it's not active in visual automations. You also have the option to restart the sequence multiple times. By default, nobody receives a sequence more than once. So let's say for example, you have all of your forms being sent into the sequence because it's a welcome. You probably don't want them to get that welcome more than one time. But for example, if you have some kind of thank you for purchasing a product, you might want to enable this to restart multiple times so that every time somebody purchases, they get that sequence. And finally, should subscribers added through visual automations stay in the sequence? Typically with a visual automation, and we'll go over this in just a minute, sequences complete, and then the subscriber moves forward in that automation. So in most cases, you'll wanna keep this as no, subscribers added via visual automation should exit the sequence. If you put yes, they will stay at that point and they won't move forward in the visual automation. Again, this particular setting is pretty handy for someone who's doing something like an evergreen sequence where you always want to be adding new emails to it and even if somebody gets to the end, you don't want them to leave that sequence. You can also duplicate these sequences at any time, as you can see down here in the bottom right. Duplicating a sequence will copy all of its content, but not all of its stats, and so you can use it as a brand new sequence. Let's take a look at reports. Now, reports let you see what's happened with the emails in this sequence. On the left side is a cumulative review of what's happened overall. So overall, I have six subscribers currently going through this. 410 have completed it. I've had 166 unsubscribe as they went through this. And this is the cumulative average open rate. So 72.2% have opened, 18.2% have clicked. And if we look at the right side here, we can see an individual email breakdown. 81% opening this first email and 71% opening the next. So let's take a look at how we put all this together. How do we get subscribers into these sequences? Let's go again to automate visual automations. So let's take a look at how one of these visual automations is created. I'm gonna click new automation up at the top right. And for this example, I'm gonna choose empty automation, but we do have a lot of different templates for automations. So you can see how something could be built out before you start building it. I'm gonna click start from scratch and we'll start building. From here, I'm gonna choose Choose a form. So I know that I have one called Creator Glue Main. This is my main form on my website. So I'm gonna start with that. And we're gonna move from there into adding a tag. I wanna make sure everyone who comes in here is tagged with a specific tag. And finally, I'm going to add a sequence. It will add that welcome sequence that we were creating earlier. Now this is a very basic automation, but that's how quick and easy it is to set up something like this. Now, anyone who subscribes to this form will get the tag and they'll finally end up in this sequence. Once the sequence is over, they'll end the automation and they'll be completely done with this. Again, as I mentioned earlier, let's say somebody subscribes to this twice or they subscribe in two different places and I have both of those connected to this welcome sequence. Subscribers will not get those twice. They'll only get it once and they'll start receiving those emails as soon as they get to this point. Since I have this first email set up as immediately, it will start sending immediately. And I can click here in the Visual Automation Builder to see how I have everything set up in that sequence, make sure it looks right, that everything is the way it should be. And I can click back over here to get back to editing. This particular visual automation is only scratching the surface of what can happen. So I'm gonna go back and take a look at something a little more complex. This is the visual automation I have set up to re-engage cold subscribers. In Kit, we consider cold subscribers anyone who hasn't opened in the past 90 days. And what I'm doing here is making sure that those subscribers get a re-engagement series of emails, asking if they're still interested in being on the list. And if so, I'll keep them there. And this automation handles all of that for me. If they click the link in these emails, so for example here, click to keep receiving these emails, I have this set up to add a tag to those subscribers that says reactivated, do not delete. And back in the visual automation builder, we can take a look down here. And if they click reactivated, do not delete, they're sent to this point. They skip over any other emails they would have received. Now they get removed from do not disturb, which is just my way of excluding them from regular broadcasts. And then they're added to uh, just end the automation. They're also removed from this cold subscriber re-engagement tag and they end the automation. So things like this are possible. You can split paths off for different things. For example, up here, if they have a VIP tag, I don't want them to go through this 
cold automation here. I don't want to ask them if they still want to be on the list because I know these are people who should be there, who I really trust are real people who should stay on the list, for example. So now that you've got your automations in place, you'll want to start customizing Kit with features that are specific to your business. To do that, you'll want to check out what we've got in the App Store. And I'll walk you through it in this video right here, which is our full deep dive Kit tutorial. The tutorial you just watched is actually part of that full tutorial. So when you head over there, use the timestamps in the description to find the section on the App Store. I'll see you over there.